I'm going to show you how to make a very quick peony. This is going to be a quick peony made using my 70, 90 and 110 millimeter um, cutter. Um, these are the set of five petal rose blossom cutters, but you of course can also use these for other, like I'm going to show you a peony, you could do anemones, you could use fantasy flowers, um, and I'm going to show you using these three sizes. So first thing with the peony is that you'd actually follow the directions in the um, for making the rose cone, and there is a separate tutorial on that. And you actually would follow the directions for creating an all-in-one cone. Because this one, once you've made this, where you basically put the ball of paste on the wire and you rotate it in the mold, then while it's soft, you're actually going to just take the point off of this. So just using a pair of scissors, I'm just gonna cut the top off, okay? So what that's gonna do is gonna form a ball for my peony, okay? And then you need to let that dry probably ideally about six to eight hours because or you know leave it overnight because obviously there's quite a big ball of paste for it to dry so just like the large side but this is the large size ball we're using and then um, once we've got that completed I'm going to take some paste so this is obviously I'm using here a pink but you could do white peonies you could do red peonies um, different colors so we're going to just work a little bit of vegetable shortening white fat into this I'm going to roll this out and I'm going to go through my pasta machine on number three thickness. So quite thick because we're going to be veining these and I'm going to do ruffles on the peony petals. So because peonies are, uh, as I say, quite a frilly flower, you need to have your paste not too thin uh, because if not, you won't actually have anything to be able to frill. So we're going to now just take my paste and I'm going to go through my, I'm going to bring my pasta machine in here. So. Just going to use the pasta machine and I'm going to have this on number three set in on here. So I'm just going to put this through the pasta machine. So we're going to just go through the pasta machine here. And then we're going to then cut out with my, as I said, the five petal rose cutter. Um, so these are um, called Pro Cut. They have a very professional cutting edge. Um, so just like a professional chef buys professional knives, this is a huge difference in the quality. Um, so as I said, they cut beautifully. And this lovely handle makes them very, very easy to use. But you see how they cut. You don't end up with any fuzzy edges on your petals, even with the paste being thicker like this. So this is the veiner I use for my roses. But this can be used, this veiner, uh, with our uh, Flower Pro, we have a Facebook group, um, over 5,000 members. And um, we've obviously have a lot of questions asked of sort of how you use this, what other flowers you can make with this. And this one um, I use in my classes I've been using for the last few months for things like sweet peas. So if you put your five sweet pea petals in there, if you're doing flowers like Lysianthus, you can put your five Lysianthus petals in there. You could use this for orchid petals. So basically you can vein one at a time, or if you're doing flowers with multiple petals, you can actually do all of them at the same time. So when we normally do a roses, of course, we're gonna use normally number um, six on the pasta machine, this is number three. And then we take the second part of the mat and just going to press this on the top. I'm going to use my little press here. So this is a little acrylic press. This just helps to distribute the weight. And you can also use like on my videos on my YouTube for making the rose, but this will actually stick to there. So it just means you just keep that basically stuck. It's going to form a vacuum and you can just keep that attached to the veiner. You see how it's going to vein your petals beautifully. Just going to peel this off. Remember this is a little thicker because we need to be able to sort of stretch these and just separate your petals. So we're gonna work on the pad. Now this one could be done on the mini pads, all right? But obviously when we move on to the bigger size petals, you're gonna need a larger pad. And we're gonna take the Dresden tool. All right, so using the Dresden tool on its side, what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to frill the edge of the petals. So you're gonna just use your Dresden tool like this. I'm just going to just work the petal edges. So you're just going to just take your Dresden tool. Remember, I'm using it on its side. So this is the technique I use for carnations and flowers like that when I'm ruffling them. And then you're going to turn over the pad to the soft side. And then what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna just work from the outside to the inside. So you see what it's actually gonna do. You're gonna get these nice petals. Now, for the first petal, we're gonna actually turn this over, okay? So we're actually gonna turn this over, okay? And um, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna just uh, put this back onto the pad. And on this one only, we're then going to just work 
because this is the heavy vein we want on the outside. And because this is going to be built onto the ball, which is left from the bottom of the cone, we want the pedals to now cup up. So you're just going to work your pedals like this. So we're going to take your uh, ball. So this is obviously now dry, okay? And you're going to just brush some um, edible glue or some egg white all over this. And for those of you that work in air drying clay, um, you can obviously do this with the hardy clay. And the nice thing about the hardy clay is it doesn't take as long to dry. So the bowl, probably after two hours, you could build the rose. Because obviously hardy clay is a lot more lightweight, so you're basically not going to put so much pressure on. And so you're going to build this. It's going to come down to the bottom here. All right, now we're going to start off with pedal number one. Now this needs to be stretched up. All right, so you need to stretch it up so it actually comes up a little bit past the center. All right, and you're going to just sort of put some little pieces on, little um, pleats onto there. And then you're going to then take the second one, which again, you're going to just put some little, we're making here almost like a little cabbage or a Brussels sprout. So we're going to just sort of put that on like that. And then you're going to brush some glue on the remaining petals about two thirds of the way up. Because you see the heavy veining will then be on the outside of this. And again, this first one, but you're just going to just put some little pleats into here. You see how this is going to sit onto here, like so. And then you're going to put in the next one. But you see how I'm actually put, I'm actually creating little pleats on here. See? So I'm just going to put this on. I'm just going to put some little pleats on like that. Okay? And then when you take this off, because this is going to be, now on the, on the flower, okay, you don't have to worry so much about, but when you're doing this for a bud, you see how you just want to just stretch the paste around so that you don't have any exposed white because when you do the bud, this is basically going to be the bud. It will just have a simple calyx on there and that would be uh, how you would make the bud or the flower center. Okay, so that will be like the sort of the first, the first stage of this. Now then you're going to move on to a medium size. So I would just show you this technique one more time. So remember, you're going to just take your pedals here, but the veining will give extra, obviously, depth to the whole piece. So again, you're just going to position your piece on the top. So just going to just press this down. This just distributes the weight, but a cake board could also be used. I mean, I like to, obviously, the acrylic, it just makes it a little bit easier to distribute the weight. And so then when you do the second layer, all right, the second layer is pretty much done in the same way, but uh, because the first layer is built like a cabbage or a Brussels sprout, we had to turn that over, but on the outside layers here, I'm just going to just uh, work this on. So this is just a really, really quick peony and um, perfect for just like I said, a quick birthday cake. But it can be made in different colors. You can also, uh, for example, you can marbleize your paste, so you can use like two different pinks, and then you can, or you can of course. Um, when we add dust to it on the edge there, that's going to really enhance it as well. So remember, this is going to be used on the main part, and you're going to turn over your pad here, and then we're going to just work from the outside to the inside. Again, you see how I'm using this on its side? So you're just going to blend your pieces together here, like so. Okay, so we're going to then take this so we build this very much like we do our rows, okay? So we're going to now take here, just put that in the middle. I'm going to put my, so my glue is going to go about halfway up, my egg white about halfway up, all five petals. Like this. Okay, and then you can use your uh, Dresden tool or you can use, and you can actually sort of like, almost see how I'm like pleating the petals. So you're just going to go underneath here like that, so you're just making like little pleats on the petals. So this is just gonna give you that nice sort of look for the peony or peony um, flower. I'm just gonna just do the last one here. And this is gonna be a little bit like the rose in it, it's just gonna be done in a spiral, okay? So you're just gonna take this, you're gonna take your first stage here, I'm gonna put this through. Just going to build on your mat here, like that. And you're just going to position pedal number one. So pedal number one, as you can see here, is going to actually sit sort of over the middle of these two pedals there. So you just position pedal number one there. And all you're going to do then is just going to turn the rose upside, the peony upside down, just like you would a rose. And then what we want to do is we want to create, so the right hand side of each pedal comes out. 
So as we're looking down into it, you see the right hand side, the right hand side, the right hand side. And then once you've got that to that stage, you're going to just squash this up and you're going to just take this and you're just almost going to just sort of scrunch it up a little bit like this. So you see how you're just going to scrunch it up. So you're going to get this nice sort of uh, center for the, uh, for the peony. Okay. So you're just going to just scrunch that up like, like that. Okay. So I'm going to do another uh, one of the exactly same pedal. So this is another. So I've used one of the 70 millimeter pedals and then I've used um, two of the 90 millimeter pedal cutters. And then these will be again, just brushed up. Again, you can do some little, just like little pleats on the edge of the pedals. But this could also be done, you know, as a sort of fantasy style flower. You could do this with a sort of sugar brooch in the middle of it. You could do like pearl brooch in the center and then just sort of build this out on the outside of it. So but we're going to just take the, make sure there's a little bit of egg white in the middle here. And again, we're going to take the layer here. So we're going to go through the middle. Again, so this petal will go, so this is like the center of the petal here. Okay, so with the center of the petal, you just position one of the petals. And again, you're just going to flip this upside down, remove your sponge. Again, we're going to now, just going to create that spiral. All right, so again, we have the same five spiral. But literally, I mean, of course, you have to wait for the ball to dry, but this takes, you know, less than 10 minutes to make the peony. So compared to, you know, doing, but as I said, it's a it's sort of a quick, just a quick peony there. And you're just going to hold it in your hand there, and then you can just sort of open these petals out just a little bit. All right, so it's just going to give you the sort of the shape of the, of the peony petal. Okay. So this is the, the larger size petal. So this is the 110 millimeter size cutter. And you're going to put this onto the top here. And again, you can just uh, use your, do some little pleats onto this. So you can just go underneath. So you're just going to make some little pleats onto the petals here. And then once you've done this, you can take your, then you're going to brush some more of the egg white down here. So approximately about halfway down with your egg white over the center here. All right, and then we're going to then take your, and of course, if you're making several of these for a, say a wedding cake, you of course could do each of the layers, let them dry a little bit, just like when we do roses. If you're making say five roses, you do all the first petals and then you want to work through. So now you see we're building so it's just that first one that's turned over because we want the heavy veining on the outside of this one. These we want that heavy veining on the inside. So again, you're just going to position this. All right. So this pedal here, so the middle of the pedal goes where seam is there. You're going to flip this upside down. And then here you're going to, again, just going to work this in a, so the right hand side of each pedal comes on top. Okay, and again, you're just going to mold this around with your fingers like this. And again, you're going to hold this with your hand. So you see how you're holding it like this. And then you can just sort of open this out. So this will give you your petals. And you can just almost like sort of pinch these up a little bit like this. All right. So this could be um, a small peony, you know, so you could use this for a small size cake. Um, or you can actually continue on with another one or two of the large size petals. So if you wanted to make an even bigger peony, um, you could obviously build this um, on and uh, to make another two or three layers. So I did one of the 70 millimeter, two of the 90 millimeter, and one of the 110. Um, but as I said, if you wanted to make another one or two of the 110, that obviously is going to make the peony fuller and bigger, depending on what size cake you have. And um, so then we're going to let this dry. And um, so generally you just would put this upside down to dry. So we're going to put this on a sort of heavy duty uh, drying rack. So we're just going to take that and just going to let that dry upside down. You can put sponge pieces in here um, if you want to. So you can put sponge pieces in the right hand side of the petals. It depends on how open you want the peony to be. And um, so I'm now going to let this dry and then we're going to come back and uh, show you how to put the calyx on this. 
So once your peony, the quick one, has dried, now um, I actually have left this for a couple of hours and I actually put a second layer from the 110 millimeter. So remember this, um, when we did the first segment, you know, I used obviously 170 millimeter, which is the same as the bud. And then I did obviously the 90 millimeter cutter, I uh, did two layers of those and then I did one layer, but you, as I mentioned, you could do two or three layers with this 110 millimeter size, which obviously is the biggest size, okay? So if I wanted to make this fuller, I could just do another layer, okay? So um, you'd have, you could have, as I said, 170, 290, and then one, two, or three, 110, depending on how big you want it. And of course, if you were doing a spray for a wedding cake, you might want to make one full one with the 310 millimeter ones, and then maybe one with two, one with one, so you get like three different size peonies and then some butts. And uh, when we do the calyx, um, I've come up with a really quick way to make a calyx for the peony, which is a really nice way to, on peony calyxes, to, uh, to make them look realistic. It's using the smallest 70 millimeter cutter, uh, in my uh, uh, Pro Cut Flower Pro uh, Blossom Cutter, Fried Petal Blossom Cutter, Rose Cutter. Um, so we're going to take the, here, I'll pop this out. And this will actually, and this is the same thickness, so this is also number three on the pasta machine. Okay, and this will actually yield, uh, will yield two calyxes. So what we do here is you're going to just cut straight down the middle here. All right, you can use a cutting wheel or you can use your little mini knife. And then we're going to cut each of these in half like this, and in half like this, in half, in half like that. See? One of these you're going to pop into your plastic flap, and then all I'm going to do here is going to place this onto my pad here. I'm just using my little companion tool. I'm just going to sort of widen it slightly. So you see how I'm just widening it from side to side just a little bit. But this is just an alternative to using a because the, the peony calyx is not really pointed, you know, you can use a blossom cutter. And all I'm going to do here is just where, where that, um, sort of like, you're just going to take your scissors and just take off that, sh where the actual sort of square part is. You see how you're going to get this almost like elongated. Because a rose calyx is the wrong shape. Um, you can use a set of blossom cutter and then you can just stretch the blossom cutter. But this works really, really well for the, as I said, the peony calyx, you see? So you see how you have this, this sort of calyx shape. And then what I'm going to do here is going to pop it onto my sponge. And I want to put the, where the little hole is on the cosmetic sponge. I want to just put the, almost like that right in that middle part here. All right, so right about here. So you see that's going to sit right above my hole. So I have like a little hole in there. And then when we, when we do this on the, as far as the egg white goes, I'm going to put your egg white onto here, so I'm going to brush that about halfway up the calyx, like this, over the center. And you're going to take your flower here. You see what you're going to do here, you're going to push the flower through the center. I'm going to just bring this up here, like so. Just take this off of the cosmetic sponge, and you're going to bring this around. So you just almost like pull this around, so this will come around to to sit on the back. So you see how it just sort of fits onto the back here, like here, and you're just going to just press this down, so this will give you your calyx, you see? Alright, so it's going to make a very nice calyx for the uh, peony, and then you can just sort of uh, just work this back a little bit, so you're just going to curl it back just very, very slightly. But it's a very quick way to make a peony, and the nice thing about this, it means everything is done with the uh, five petal rose cutters, all right, so using obviously the three sizes. Um, and here you can see on the bud, okay, um, so I've got here on the bud of the, the peony here, um, the uh, obviously same calyx. Uh, so that will be your quick peony. But this is, a, as I said, a very quick little peony to make. It's not such an investment of time. And if you have the blossom cutters, obviously this enables you to make roses and obviously these peonies with the same cutter. Um, so I hope you will enjoy uh, making the peonies and the calyxes using my uh, five petal rose cutters. And uh, as I said, these are the, your three sizes. So just remember if we use these for the large, medium, and small rows, and obviously for peonies and lots of other fantasy flowers and flowers. So this has been Nicholas Large. Hope you've enjoyed this segment. I'll see you again real soon.